So, Baruch Hashem, we're trying to bring out some information about um, our mission, our reality in this lifetime. And we're trying to understand what in the world is going on with all the lost souls. Many of us, we feel that we ourselves are lost, when in reality we're not lost at all. Just we are those ones who are appointed that we are responsible on bringing all the lost ones back on track and bringing them into the light. Now, we all heard about the lost tribes of Israel. There are 10 out of 12 tribes that are lost and we're looking for them and we're hoping to see them. Now, there are many evidence and there are many, many uh, testaments of people who met and saw um, wonderful people that claims to be from the tribes and people who are holding um, objects and traditional stuff that is proving with no doubt that they are belong to a branch of the Israeli culture that they themselves are connected to the tribes. For an example, many of the Ethiopians um, people that came to, to, to Israel and made Aliyah and joined the nation of Israel, the Jewish people in the Holy Land of Israel, many of them are claiming to be from the tribe of God. Some of them are claiming to be from the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah, but some of them are claiming, big amount of them are claiming to be part of the tribe of, uh, of God, of the tribe of Dan, and they have many evidence for that. You have people in Africa, you have people in, um, in China, you have communities all around the world that have proofs in Afghanistan and in, in the ice deserts of Russia and China, people who has great evidence for them to be part of the lost tribes. They are named after um, our ancestors. They are being called Ephraim and Naphtali and Asher and Shimon. They, they're holding those names and they're walking with stars of David on their necklaces and they're wearing talitot and they have things that looks like tefillin and they're not eating um, the flesh, the meat of pork, of, 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 um, of pig, never. And there are many, many evidence for their true connection, traditional and blood connection to the tribe of, of tribes of, of Israel. But there is a verse that makes um, those evidence um, doubtable, that people are doubting in those things we found with those people who are claiming to be part of the tribes. And that verse is telling us, those verses are telling us that the lost tribes are actually located behind the mountains of darkness, and that's it. You cannot find them and they're lost and whoever claimed to be from the tribe of Israel, we won't believe him because it's written for us that the tribes are hidden in a place that is behind the mountain of darkness, behind the river Sambation, that is a river that no one can pass and no one can go through and you can never see them and we have not seen them since they went away from us 3000 years ago and that's it, we lost them and only when redemption will come we're gonna see them. Now, that's not true. We know that those verses are written but we need to understand the real intention. The verses are describing and the Midrashim are describing the people of Israel as giants, that every one of them is one and a half time higher 
than every person, that they have great skills and powers, that they are able to travel in time, that they are able to fly, that they know the simple and known Hashem Amforash, the revealed and known name, the holiest name of heaven, and they were and carry all the religion instruments from time of the Beit of, of the Mishkan, from the time they went, we went out of Egypt, and they're hidden. That's what people are claiming. But the real truth is that those mountains of darkness are not physical mountains. We know that we already searched the globe, that we already went to the right and to the left. We know that there are no mountains of darkness that have not been seen by satellites, that have not been seen by by the the ships above the, the universe that are flying. You can see the whole world with Google Map and with, with Google Earth and you can see simply that there are no giants walking on no part of the earth. Just that those mountains of darkness are the mountains that are blinding our eyes from seeing the greatness of our lost siblings. We cannot see that they are giants in spirit. We cannot see them because we're so self-centered in our own Judaism and in our own path of being so-called religious that we cannot recognize the shiny souls of our siblings, of all those amazing and fantastic and precious souls that are rising from the ground and coming back to their source of truth. Those true believers that are seeking for the Creator, that are loving the Torah, that are caring about the Bible, that they worship one God, that they don't have no doubts on their faith, that they care about the nation of Israel, that they are shedding tears on the land of Israel, that they are mourning with us on our troubles and they're happy with us in our holy days and they're celebrating and, and, and dancing with us all the great events of our people and they are siblings in blood. They are our brothers and holy sisters and they are one with us. You cannot think for a moment and I'm saying that to every Jewish person you cannot think for a moment that you are greater than your brother because your name is different or that your role in redemption is different. You're equal to him and he might be even greater than you. And it's your mission and I am now sending this wake up call to every Jewish person on earth. Your mission is to bring back your brothers to your father. Your father cannot sleep and he cannot eat and he cannot drink when all his children, 10 out of 12, are still lost in the dark. That they still did not came back home after going between the nations and disappeared over there, lost their identity, lost their tradition, lost their family, lost their connection, lost their their heart intention, lost their, 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 their faith, lost their smiles, lost their connection to the Torah, to the prayer, to, to the Holy Land of Israel, lost their true identity of being true Israelim, children of Yaakov. Twelve tribes came out of Jacob and the holy children of Moses the children that went and spread light between the nations, they're all future to come. They're all joining us. They're all coming back and they are waking up from within. Every person that wakes up to love the nation of Israel around you, every person that wakes up to, to believe in one God, everyone that wakes up to believe in the righteousness and holiness of the Jewish people. Everyone around you that has a crazy desire to the Holy Land and you wish to see and stand in front of the Western Wall, you should recognize inside of him that greatness of your siblings. 
It does not make him Jewish. It does not make him not supposed to go through the process of massive conversion of millions of people that will convert before the day of redemption and will join the nation of Israel as one and equal in rights and equal in wisdom and equal in qualities and equal to inherit the holy land of Israel with us. All the twelve tribes will inherit the Holy Land and the tribe of Judah, that is our tribe, this is the tribe of the Jewish people. Today we're something around 15 million people. Before the Holocaust we were, let's say, today if the Holocaust would not take place, we would be numbered as 30 or something like that million people. Without all the horrible decrees and prosecutions that we went through by the church or by different governments and armies that destroyed us and killed us for our religion and for our customs in earlier generations, we would probably be twice as much and we would have been a nation of something like 60 million people. That could have been our number if we wouldn't be chased for our Judaism until today. So think about that. We are one tribe, the tribe of Yehuda. You have the tribe of Levi. You have the tribe of Binyamin. You have the tribe of Asher, the tribe of Naphtali, tribe of God, tribe of Zvulun, and the rest of them. Shimon, all those holy tribes, the tribe of Menashe, all those holy tribes, each and every one of them, and especially by the fact that they never been chased and killed for their Judaism because they were not count as Jewish because they're not from the tribe of Yehuda that had to go through those prosecutions. So they themselves stayed in number, maybe lost their religion, maybe lost their tradition, but never lost their numbers in the same amount that we lost because they never been killed for their Judaism. So you're talking about 10 times 60 to 100 million people. Think about the fact that in Korea, more than 1 million people are learning Gemara, Talmud on daily basis. Think about hundreds and thousands of people that are learning Gemara in China and all around the world. What in the world is bringing those people to open pages of ancient Talmud Bavli that is written in the ancient Hebrew and been given in traditional hidden way secretly from one father to his child for years in hidden places under horrible decrees what bring those foreign people to feel such passion learning Torah, to have such a great desire to the Talmud, to the oral Torah? What? Except for an Israeli spark in their soul that you can never turn off because that's their true identity and that's their real nature and they're about to join us and to see the house of God in the holy city of Yerushalayim and to all together call him in his name because his house will be called the house of prayer to all nations and everyone will come from four wings of the universe to call him in his name and to bow to him with admiration and great love and in a humble way and true respect and after justice will take place and all evil disappear from the world in our days, like the prophets promised to us. And I'm reminding you today. Amen. Ken Yehi Thank you.